All right, I'm Dave Rat, and today I'm going to talk about audio transformers. Audio transformers come in very handy. They're great for ground isolation, getting rid of buzzes, for splitting microphones and sending to multiple places. And people tend to use transformers willy-nilly. They just put them away. Hey, let's have a mic splitter. Let's put transformers in there. Uh, we're going to run to two different places. Let's put transformers. Transformers get used quite a bit, especially in the older analog stuff, but it's not uncommon because they just solve problems. They make it easy. You got a recording truck, put a transformer split onto that recording truck. And why would we not use them for just about everything whenever we need to isolate or split? Because if you look at the specs for transformers, look at this, um, Radial JS3, go on the site there, or we can look at the specifications, and it's 20 to 20K, plus zero, minus one dB, or something like that off the top of my head. You know, extremely flat, less than point something or other, phase shift throughout the response. This is a, a very high quality unit. Same thing with this Whirlwind ISO 2. It's a two in, two out. The JS3 is a one in, three out, two in, two out. Um, isolation transformer, you plug it in and it's got um, the ability to give you isolation and look at the specs. I mean, they're uh, extremely flat. And this radio ISO two, twin ISO, same thing or similar thing to this, uh, the Whirlwind ISO two, two in, two out, some switches and lifts and um, these things have incredible specifications and for all the people that love to look at specs and curves and readouts you look at that and hey why would you even question whether or not this is a flawless piece that has a pristine response and put it in line i've also got some other ones here i've got um, this little cinemag which is uh, what rat uses in our iso splitters um, when we just when we have an ISO out and I've also got this crimson uh, one in two out and I've just wired up some XLRs on the end of this so that we can test those as well and we have some splitters with the crimsons in them as well as we've also used the um, Lundahls. When I was starting the sound company I really, really avoided transformers at all costs. I felt that they sounded bad, they hurt the sound, I, they dropped the level. I never trusted them. In fact, I avoided them unless they were absolutely necessary. All the old rat systems were all hardwire splits and I built complex grounding schemes in order to get around using transformers and then maybe carry a transformer with a uh, molt in, molt out, they could hit a recording truck if need be. My aversion to transformers, I could actually tell by looking at my console if transformers were plugged in. And I'm gonna actually go through and test to see if this is a, um, a myth and I was barking up the wrong tree or Actually, there's some foundation to what's going on because here's the conflict. The transformers have pristine specs. They shouldn't do anything. Maybe they drop the level a dB. Who cares? We can always turn the gain up. No big deal. Or is there something that we're missing and the transformers are doing something more, causing issues that we don't expect, which is kind of what my intuition and experience told me, but I've never gone through and tested and found that gremlin. So today, I'm going to look for those gremlins. And what we'll do through the next video or series of videos is test several different microphones. Oh, I've got a test set up over here and I've got some cotton insulation piled up over a speaker, a two-way speaker, and that's driven off this little amplifier. And the output of the speaker will put whatever signal that I've sent to it, and then I put a microphone on that. The output of that microphone shows up at this Y cable here. And this Y cable goes one side into channel one of the console, 
and the other side of the Y cable is here, and this is where we'll plug on various transformers. And then this goes to channel two of the console. So if I just plug this into here like this, now the output of the microphone is hardwire split into two channels of the console, just like it would happen with a mains and monitor console um, at a show, and if we just used hardwire. If I take and put this ISO here in line, now I've got hardwire to the main or channel one and an ISO to channel two, like an ISO to monitors or the recording truck. Um, and the same thing. So I can put different transformers in there and we can look at the frequency response in smart as well as hear what's going on. I'll be listening in the headphones and I'm also recording on a Tascam recorder here. And what I'll do is I will switch when I'm doing the test, I will turn off this microphone above me and let you hear just the signal that uh, we're listening to. And I'll try and do my best to um, carry that through and give you enough time to hear what's going on. I recommend using headphones or studio monitor, something that's got a wide frequency response for more critical listening um, than maybe just using your phone for this. Although you will be able to see the differences on the um, on smart. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our first test here. I've got a um, Audix, uh, analyzer RTA mic on there and um, if I turn on this sound bullet here it'll make pink noise and it's coming out of the speaker going into the microphone and showing up here on the console and we can see the response there now in order to when we do later on when we do comparisons either in this or other videos um, what I've done is channel one and channel two, if I hit the polarity reverse on one of the channels and we PFL both of them, we should have a null. And what I've done is I've nulled these two channels out such that they cancel really well. And we'll see this fall all the way to the ground. Um, now I know that if we listen to channel one and channel compare to channel two, any differences we hear are not from the console because the console is nulled very well. I mean, we see a little residual there, but not much. Um, it is, um, the cancellation is quite good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take off this polarity verse, and now they're gonna sum instead of null. We'll PFL just one of them, and we see. Now, as far as the frequency response that we see, um, you know, it's a speaker and a microphone. The speaker's not flat. Since we're going to be comparing the signal uh, with and without the transformer, we don't really care if it's flat. What we care is the difference between the curves that we measure. So what I'll do, I'll wait for my voice to settle here. I'm going to go ahead and capture this. And there's our baseline with the main PA with the microphone split hardwire into two channels. Now what I'm going to do is unplug one of the channels. And fan and power is on, so it has a little pop that shows up in there. And we'll look at the difference. So these are tracking pretty well. Let's go ahead and listen to the difference here. With the pop, it's hard to tell. Um, but we're not seeing a significant difference at this point. I do see a little more low end. Maybe it'll settle down. slight difference. Um, let's see how that compares to some other things that we do. Let's go ahead and take the 
Whirlwind ISO 2. And let's put that on the, oh, let's say, we'll save this uh, curve here. So the first one was split. And this one, the second one is um, just a single input. Now let's go ahead and plug in the ISO 2. Let's listen to it while we do it. Well, that's interesting. So if we look at these curves here, we can see that when we plugged in the ISO 2 and I could hear it, a low end boost, and we actually got more low end up in the 40 to 45 range, uh, 40 to 50 range, and we got less low end below 36 and down. So it changed the frequency response of the uh, microphone. Now we're listening and looking at the microphone and this is the front of house. So what we're saying is that when we plug in the isolation transformer to plug in the monitor console, it's altering the sound of the mic in front of house everywhere. The microphone itself is now sounding different. And this is interesting because this means that the transformer is altering the entire signal chain, even the things that aren't plugged into the transformer. And this is with a phantom powered condenser microphone and the Whirlwind ISO 2. Let's go ahead and do this again. And let's do it with the JS3 splitter. So we'll turn this on. And I'll plug it in. First, I'll plug in the JS3 and we'll see what happens. And then I'll plug and unplug the output so we can try it with just a transformer plugged in and the transformer loaded down, plugged into another console channel. All right, I didn't see anything significant there. I saw a little bit of change. This is falling in line. It's making a slight variation with this analyzer mic. Now, let's try something a little different. Let's see what happens to a dynamic microphone. So I'm gonna put this Beta 58 on here and we'll do those same two tests. Beta 58, going straight into a single console.
removing phantom power so it makes no difference. Unload it and load it. And last, before I close out this video, let's go ahead and look at this JS3. All right, that's video one, and we'll do more because it keeps going.